and welcome to story time with Miss Chelsea. Again, I'm your host, Miss Chelsea, and we are so excited that you are joining us this morning. And you guys, I have a new friend joining us on the set of story time. I hope you are all excited to meet her. Did you introduce me yet? <laughs> no, I have not. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Well, our friend, is Miss Grumbelina. <laughs> did you say my name yet? I couldn't quite hear you. I did. Grumbelina. All right. Good to have you all here, I guess, or something. I don't know. I'm just so frustrated with everything. Why are you frustrated, Grumbelina? Well, I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck in the house or in my yard, and things are just uh, you know, kind of boring. Yeah? What have you been doing for fun? I've been eating Fruit Loops. And playing on my tablet and smelling things. Smelling things? Yup, I smell that. I can smell the Fritos that you guys are eating at home. Yeah, I just been smelling things because there's nothing else to do. Well, that sounds like fun. So I'm just so frustrated and bored. Yeah, well, you can always. <laughs> you know, probably is not my real name. What is your real name? I forgot. I think it's like, um,. Angelina or something like that, but I don't know. Everyone just calls me Grumbelina because I grumble all the time. And I try to stop it. I just keep grumbling. Well, we could always sing a song. Maybe you won't grumble if we sing. Well, it's hard to grumble while you're singing. It is hard to grumble while you're singing. Unless you're like, grumble, grumble, rocks and rocks and grumbly, grumble. That just doesn't, doesn't work. No, no, it doesn't. Blah, I'm eating my hair. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I got it. I got it. Don't get your hands away from my mouth. I'm sorry, Grumbelina. I know. I if I wanted help, I would have asked for it. This is true. This is true. That's always a good rule, too. Yeah, wait for someone to Or maybe you could have asked if I wanted help first. I, I could have asked. I'm sorry, Grumbelina. All right. I, I forgive you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. All right. What's this song we're singing? Um, why don't we sing a song from the Prince of Egypt? Oh, I like that movie. That's yeah. a great movie. Uh -huh. It is a great movie because we're learning about Moses right now. Oh. Yeah. I like that Val Kilmer was doing that, but like yeah. older Val Kilmer, like back in the 90s and 2000s Val Kilmer, not like right now Val Kilmer. No, you don't like that Val Kilmer? No, he's kind of let himself go a little bit. Oh. I mean, he's still awesome, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I, like, I like young Val Kilmer. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Well, are you ready to sing? Yes. Yes? You're, are we going to do a little duet here? Sure. All right. Are you ready? Absolutely. All right. Are you guys ready at home? We're going to sing a song. Ready? All right. <clears throat> there can be miracles when you believe, though hope is frail. It's hard to kill. It's hard to kill. Who knows what miracles you can achieve when you believe somehow you will. You will when you to help me get ready for this moment. That's a great idea. My whole life. That's a very good idea. So uh, do you have any like pictures or anything the kids at home did? Yeah, I actually have a picture from Miss Tori. She is a preschool teacher in the area, and she made this for all of her kids that she's missing. Oh, wow. Isn't that really nice? Yeah, there's like flowers and everything. And yeah. A tree. It's almost like she's she's hoping for spring to come. Are well, I think spring is coming because I heard like, the geese yesterday. Yeah. And they're going, squawk, squawk, squawk. You guys do it at home. Squawk, squawk, squawk. Yeah. It sounded, I, I couldn't even sleep in. They were so loud. Oh, that's not good. Is that why sometimes you grumble? Yeah, I don't think I get enough sleep. Aw, sorry. My parents tell me I need a nap time, and I tell them I'm too big for a nap, but I probably should be sleeping more yeah, often. Yeah, you should be taking that nap time. 
My dad likes to take naps. Does he? All the time. Well, that's good. Sometimes while I'm talking to him, he just starts falling asleep like this. Do you wake him up? I try, but man, I, I go louder than his snoring. His snoring was the loudest thing I've ever heard. It's like a freight train. Yeah, sometimes snoring. Choo -choo! Oh my goodness. Well, we're really happy and glad that you joined us today, Grumbelina. Yeah, I'm gonna go grumble somewhere else now. All right, so you have fun, okay? All right, you guys, um, don't grumble. That's my thing. That's her thing. Bye, right. Miss Chelsea. Bye, Miss Grumbelina. Grumble, 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 grumble. All right, you guys. Thank you, Grumbelina, for joining us this morning. And we are going to jump into our story. I'm so excited because we get to learn more about what's going on with Moses. And is Pharaoh going to let God's people go? That is the big question of today. So let's dive right in. We are in part number seven. If you're following along, we're on page 124. If not, pull up a comfy seat, find a lovely stuffed animal, and join in. God gave Moses a message for his people. Moses told God's people to take lambs and sacrifice them. He told them to put the blood over their front doors. The blood of the lamb was God's great sign. That night, the Lord took the lives of the firstborn in homes that did not have God's great sign. Many Egyptians died that night. But the Lord did not take the lives of the firstborn in homes that had blood over their doors. God passed over the families of Israel. At last, Pharaoh stopped pretending to be God. He listened to God and told God's people, go. He's finally letting God's people go, you guys. It's exciting. Can you see the grandpas and grandmas, the men and women, the children and grandchildren, and the flocks and herds all going? Look at all of them. Can you see them? Woohoo! God did keep his promise to Abraham. He did make him into a great nation. When God's people left Egypt, there were almost one million of them. Do you know what God did next? Do you guys know? God gave this great nation his good word. Moses went up on a mountain to meet with God. The mountain shook and lightning flashed. God spoke to Moses, and then Moses told the people all that God had said. Ah, that's pretty cool. Moses told them how to love God. Moses told them how to love others. Moses told them how to live as God's people. And to make sure that no one would forget, Moses had God's words written down in God's holy book. But do you know what happened? It's something sad. God's people still forgot God's word. Many of them doubted that God's word was good. Many of them disobeyed God's word. Many of them did not let God be king over them. That is very sad. So God punished his people. He made them live in the desert for a long, long time. But after 40 years, God was ready to keep another part of his promise. God was ready to bring his people into their own place. It's exciting, you guys. And we'll find out where God is taking his people next time when we read part eight going into God's place. As always, I would love to end with prayer. So if you guys could all come together, bow your heads, close your eyes, we're going to talk to God. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this time that we got to share together as friends. I thank you, Lord, that we got to learn about you and learn about Moses and what happened with Pharaoh. Thank you that he let your people go, Lord. And thank you for just being an awesome God who loves us and takes care of us. I ask that you will give everybody listening a wonderful rest of their day. Help them not to be bored. Help them to find lots of fun things to do, like Rumbelina said. And I ask this in Jesus' name, Lord. 
Amen. Thank you guys. Goodbye.